friends, you are crafting with Kim Byers at the Celebration Shop and today we are going to use the Cricut Mug Press and we are going to make some really fun patterned designs. So I'm going to take you into Cricut Design Space and I'm going to show you how to create these patterns using those fun little designs in Cricut Design Space. Polka dot stripes, all those things, I love them. But we are going to personalize things a bit more with very fun little details. So for instance, if you wanted to give a Teacher Appreciation Day gift or that week you want to give gifts to your school bus driver and your coach and your counselor and your teachers then you could make personalized mugs for each so for the school bus driver we put little buses all the way around we could have little apples for the teachers or if you wanted to get really personal you could do for the math teacher like little equations um, so there's just so many possibilities let me show you how easy it is to make these patterns in Cricut Design Space and if you've not already I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join me for all my future videos okay let's go and so this is the first design that we're going to work with and we're actually going to do two different things we're going to do a mug with infusible ink and we're going to do a mug with sublimation and I wanted to show you the two different ways to do this because with um, infusible ink you need to have the colors on hand that you want to work with and with sublimation you have to have a course the printer and the printer paper so if you don't know what uh, sublimation is just yet so sublimation is basically when you print the design on special paper and then you apply it with heat and I'll put a link up above to a video that I did how to convert an Epson printer to a sublimation printer in case you want to check that out but if not and you're using infusible ink with your mug press let's go ahead and let me show you how to create these really fun patterns so what we want to do is we want to go into images and you want to pick things that would work so I obviously did apples um, and, and I want to bring you in and show you this really quick before we hop back over to what I've already selected because when you're looking at these designs, they're not all created equal, right? So if we are doing sublimation, you could absolutely take this bushel basket. That would be no problem. But if you are doing infusible ink, you're probably going to want to stick with something that's one to two, three colors, um, and then work from there. So like you could do this one and maybe change um, the brown to black or um, you may want to do this one and then just have the stem be green and do a couple of different colors so but if you're using sublimation you can go as much as you want because again you're printing it on special paper with a special printer okay so let's go back out and use the ones that I have already chosen so I wanted to make a personalized mug so I chose this design I thought very fun number one teacher and then I personalized it with our teachers name and then these are some of my apples that I designed um, for a cartridge for Cricut some time ago and I'll put the numbers to both of these down in the description below in case you want to use these exact images so what you want to do though is go back into images really quick and go into project type and we're gonna do a large mug and then I want to just get the template. I don't necessarily want one of these designs, right? So a lot of times the templates are sort of hovering around the bottom of the grouping. So here we go. So there's the wavy edge, the straight edge, um, the zigzag, and I have already chosen to use the torn edge. And the reason that I did that really, it doesn't matter because I'm going to um, not use the full flooded effect what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it so that I am just going to end up keeping when I weed it out I'm just going to keep the apples and um, the leaves I'm not going to keep that whole flooded effect on the mug okay so let's look in detail at the one that I've already created so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this back on just so you can see um, I kept this while I was working with it in the beginning because I wanted to be able to make sure that my apples didn't fall off the edges but just for simplicity's sake until we get ready to actually do the cut I am going to turn those off just so we can see it better because this is the better representation of what it's going to look like in the end. So if we scroll down a little bit and we're looking at this is our template and these are our apples. Move those down so you can see everything. So what we want to do is I want to take this and I'm going to put it in the center. Just go up to a range and send it to the front so you can see it easily. You're going to want to um, you know place it a little bit high in that center and you can always click shift on both of those or you can click on them both with shift key over in the layers panel and you can align 
to make sure that you're centered horizontally before you do all the other work, right? And then the next thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and choose um, a font for your teacher's name. I used this one, uh, Dom Casual, and so you could type in whatever that teacher's name is, and since I've got her name already, I'm just gonna duplicate it for speed. Okay, so now I have that below, number one teacher, Mrs. Boyd. And so then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make my pattern. So I want to take this apple and I'm going to look over into layers and there's a lot of cuts there because this is a cut file and so a lot of times you're going to have a lot of different layers. I do have both colors, red and green, of infusible ink. So I want to have the leaf and I want to have the apple. But everything else I'm going to turn off. Now if I only had one color, I would just use this one right because it has the full design but now what I want to do is I'm clicked on this I'm going to ungroup them so that I can move the little leaf up to the top of the apple okay and so once I get my apple the way I want it to be I'm going to grab both elements and I'm going to group them together okay you don't want to use the attach function because then that would turn them both the same color so just group these two together so that they don't move and then what we're gonna do is we're going to, I wanna bring it down in size just a little bit. It's a little large and you can place it on here just to kind of get a better idea of what you want it to be. And if I look at the apple above, it's this one is 0.771. So I could change this one to be the same just so I'm showing you exactly what I did before. Okay, and so then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna duplicate it. So two, three, four, and five. And then I'm going to grab all of those that I just duplicated and then here's the trick and it's so easy you're gonna go up into a line and you're going to align bottom so now they're all in a row together once you have that take that last apple and move it over okay move it all the way over to the edge and you could take this first apple and move it over somewhat to the edge and then you want to click on all of them again so you want all five apples and you could go into a line and just make sure that you didn't you know get them off you can align bottom one more time and then go align and distribute horizontally so when you do that it's going to perfectly put them in a line right so we'll move that up to the top and then kind of say okay that's about perfect then we're going to duplicate it and we're going to take that and we're going to put it all the way down at the bottom roughly the same distance from top and bottom and then when you duplicate it again we're going to offset it okay so now that i have all of those i want to delete the apples that are underneath my middle pieces right so i'm going to delete 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 and delete okay so now i have this fun little pattern and i'm going to take this one off too um, this fun little pattern on my mug and I've added more color all the way around plus I personalized it. So now you can go into color sync and you could move all of these things around. So you could move this to the center. You could move Miss Boyd. Um, she's already green. I kind of like her to be green. And then what you want to do next and this is just my I like to turn this off just for a minute so that I can kind of see what it's going to look like. What I would like to do is to change the number one up here to green so that it's kind of like the leaf, like the rest of the apples. So what we're going to do is we'll click on that and see it's one cut in your layers. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take it and you want to duplicate it. And so we're going to move it down to the edge and then we're going to click on it again and we're going to use our contour tool. So what we want to do is we can go in and just click off of the number one. So we've turned that off and we have just our red apple. Then we'll go into the one that we duplicated, use our contour tool. We can just go in and hide everything and then click on only and so now what we can do is we can take this and put it up on top of our apple and we will turn that green. So if we go into color sync, we can see it right there and then we just drag it down and there we go. So now we have this beautifully designed, personalized mug with lots of pattern all the way around. How cute. Okay, so now it's time to take this to cut. So what we wanna do at this point is we're going to click on that template and I'm gonna turn that back on. And if it bugs you, <laughs> kind of bugs me, but if it bugs you, you could go up and change that color um, if that makes it you know, easier for you. And so what we would do then is then we're going to want to, now we have this 
two times, right? Because let me click on this one up here. Um, if you don't, you're going to need to duplicate it. And I'm just going to do the same thing there just for ease of eye. Turn that white. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to grab that entire design and we're going to attach it. Okay, and it turned it black. I know, don't panic. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll just grab that and we'll turn it white. And so now you can see that all of your elements are there and they're going to cut out. And then we're going to do the same thing to this one as well. And you know that you're going to cut one out of red and one out of green. Okay, so now before we go over to the mat, the last thing that we want to do is we want to change one of these to a different color. So just quickly, I changed it to white, but if they're both white, they're going to go to the same mat, and we don't want that. What we need is for them to cut out as two different colors. So let's change this bottom one to red, and if you want to, you can change the top one to green, just so you know which is which. And say, so, okay, and so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna use our maker, but you could use your explorer or you could use your joy. So let's go ahead and make it. Okay, so we have two mats, and what you always have to do when you're working with infusible ink, and you always have to do when you're working with sublimation, you need to mirror image your design. And so let's just go ahead and do both of them so that we don't forget and then we can hit continue and it's going to try to connect to my maker to our material so I have infusible ink transfer sheet as a favorite if you don't it's under the iron-on section in browse all materials so I'm going to go ahead and choose this okay and we'll just be using the fine point blade which is already in my machine so we can go ahead and go over to the craft table and cut this one um, but before we do I want to quickly show you how to do um, a similar design but using sublimation Okay, so now I've opened up a new design, and this is what I put together for our sublimation project. Just remember that with sublimation, you can have as much pattern and as much design as you want because you're printing it out. You don't have to have all of these colors. So let's just walk through the design. So I did the little buses, right? So I went in and, and picked an image. It could have been anything, as much detail as you want. I didn't want it to be too um, intricate only because, you know, the buses will be small, um, but you can technically print anything. So, um, but I don't have to have the gray and the yellow and the black for this. And I could even put a pattern behind the best school bus driver um, using the offset tool because it's going to print. So I could have that little added extra. Okay, so once you've done this, once you've created whatever you want to create for this print, the only thing that you have to remember when you do this is that you need to segment them because you can't do print then cut this long. So what you're going to do is, so for instance, I have taken these little buses and I grouped them together and then I flattened them. So that means that, you know, let's see if I could just undo this real quick. Let's unflatten. And so then I'm grabbing this whole thing and you can see here that it's grouped. My only option is to ungroup, but I grouped these one, two, three, six little buses and then you can flatten them. And now when you flatten them, they become one print then cut element. So you would want to do that to all of the elements right here as well. And then you would be able to do it to this last piece of the patterning as well. So these five buses, excuse me, six buses. So then whenever you go to make it, it's going to print all of those elements within print then cut. So this is how you would use Cricut with sublimation or the designs of Cricut with sublimation. So let's go ahead and just hit make it so you can see what this is going to do. So it brings it to a sheet of paper, right? So you have your one section, the second section, and then the third is over on this other. What you do need to do is do mirror image. So we're gonna go up and mirror both of those so that when we print it out on our paper and then we put it onto our design, it's going to be facing the correct way when the ink comes off, right? <laughs> okay, so then we can hit continue. And at this point, we don't really care that the maker is trying to connect. No, what we wanna do is we wanna go send to printer. So we're gonna send that to our printer and then we're going to choose our Epson. And then um, what you want to do is I always take this bleed off because if you leave the bleed on, it's going to, you know, make each one of those little buses a little fatter and they look a little distorted. So take off the bleed and then we're going to use our system dialog box because I want to be able to choose to have a better version of that print. And so then when we 
go, it's going to bring up our dialog box. Okay, and so at this point, what we want to do is we want to check Epson printer, one copy, and then we want to go here and make that best instead of normal. And then we just go ahead and print. Okay, so here we are on the craft table. We are gonna start with our infusible ink project and then we'll move over to our sublimation. So we have our Cricut mug press, we have our mugs, we have a lint roller, heat tape, and I'm gonna use my paper trimmer. We'll be putting it on a green mat and using our maker to cut it out. But you can use the Explorer and you can use the Joy. So if you are interested in the infusible ink, this is your section. If you are more curious about the sublimation, um, if you look down in the description below, I have chapters. So so that you can move forward to the sublimation portion of the video. Okay, let's move everything out of the way and we'll set up our mat. Okay, so for the large boxes of infusible ink, they actually come with butcher paper in them. Um, so you don't have to have your own, which the smaller boxes of mug press do not have butcher paper in them. It's really inexpensive, um, so I just have a ton of it on hand, but you would have the ability to trim this down and do multiple mugs um, with this. Okay, so for the infusible ink, again, much more muted um, than it will be when it's actually applied with heat. So what we wanna do is we want to take off a piece and we want to cut it down. So we're gonna basically need the full 12 inches, just shy of 12 inches. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it to 12 and then it's going to be just over four and a half inches. So with my paper trimmer, I'm able to be very accurate and not waste anything. So I'm gonna go to four and three quarter. So now this is the piece that we want to put on our mat. And so what I do with infusible ink is I do not use a scraping tool or anything like that. I put it down with my hands and I'm just careful with it so that I don't scrape off any of the ink, okay? So just apply it with your hands, but make sure that your hands are oil and lotion free because you don't want to mess up your ink before you even get your project going, right? Okay, so now we're ready to take this over to the Cricut Maker. Okay, so now we've cut out our red, and what we wanna do is we wanna bend our mat and not our infusible ink. The mat can take it, so we'll get our design off. And then what we wanna do is we want to um, put our next color on. But what I did with the green, so when you do the infusible ink this way, you're not layering it. What you're actually doing is you're putting one of the colors on the other color, meaning like, so these pieces that are green, then what we'll do is we will weed out anything that's going to be green on this, and then we'll add that green to it. So what we wanted to do with all of materials, and this is just me, like I wanna save as much as absolutely possible. So what I did is I went in to the green one, and I should have showed you this while we were in design space, but I went into the green one and I turned off this back piece because then it's going to save me all of this infusible ink. So it's literally just gonna cut out this middle part that has my green items, okay? So what we wanna do then is we're gonna go ahead and cut our green and place it on the mat. Okay, so here we are with our green cut. And I can just tell you that while I was doing this, next time I will cut my secondary or third color. So this is my primary. So this is the one I'm gonna keep. And so my other colors, I will just cut out those elements instead of all the elements. So lesson learned, um, but I could have saved a good bit of um, infusible ink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save these apples and some other things um, to maybe place in a, a fall project or something at some point. I can't stand wasting any material. Materials. So what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and weed out all of um, our colors. And so we'll just start by peeling this one away. And we're left with our template there. And then I'm going to just crack. Now, if you've not done uh, infusible ink before, infusible ink is more of a cracking method than it is anything else. So you'll literally, you know, just pop and crack out the pieces that you want. So for this one, I actually decided I'm going to keep Miss Boyd on the red simply because it would be too difficult to place each of those, you know, and get them in line. So I'm gonna weed her name out and then we're going to weed out um, the the green because we want what well, remember what we're doing is we're taking this whole piece off and so we're not going to flood it with ink right we are going to take all the ink away except for the apples in the red 
and then the stems in the green. But I am going to uh, leave the Mrs. Boyd just because I want to not have to place that by hand, okay? Okay, so now we can remove our green from the mat. Again, folding the mat and not the material. So just kind of peel that away. Okay, we'll put that out of the way. And so if you look at our design, what we want to do is we're going to take off the number one. We're going to take that off. And then we're going to take off each of the leaves. And if you want to, you can take off one and then replace one. Just pop it out. Put it in place and just keep doing that. And then once we um, get done with these leaves, we'll take out our number one and place it. And then we'll be ready to put that onto our mug. Now that I've placed all of my green elements onto the red, what I want to do next is I took my uh, Cricut mug out of its cute little gift box, and so we could embellish that later um, to put the mug back into. And so what I want to do though is I want to take my lint roller and I want to make sure that I get any lint or residue off of my mug. And the reason you want to do this is because that ink will attach itself to anything, right? Meaning anything on the mug. So then then when you take it off, if you didn't get the dust or the lint or whatever might be on the mug off, then the ink is going to come off as well. Okay, so we just want to make sure that we spend the time to roll it out. Now that it's done, what we want to do next is we want to apply our design to it. So my best advice to you is to make sure that your template is all the way down, that you've somewhat centered that primary element of your design. So I'm kind of using the one on the apple. And then you need to make sure that you pull it very tight so that you don't get any bubbling at all. Bring that around and secure it. And then holding the handle, bring the other side around and secure it. Next, I just took the butcher paper that was available in the box and cut it in two strips. So I have now four and a half inch strips that I can cover my mug with. So I want three, two and three. So my paper trimmer is coming in super handy today. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to put it around our mug and we can trim off, let's see, we're probably gonna trim off. It's a 10 inch around, so let's go ahead and trim off two. Okay, and then we'll use our heat resistant tape to put our butcher paper in place. Oh, that is perfect, perfect, perfect. And do not use any other type of tape on this. If you run out of heat resistant tape, do not use scotch tape. It will ruin your mug. Okay, so now we're ready to put that in our mug press. Our mug press is hot and now it's as simple as just putting our mug in. Sliding it down, making sure it's all the way down and then closing our mud press. So now the indicator lights have started and it'll work its way all the way through about six minutes. The mug press is done, so we just lift the handle and remember that the handle of the mug will not be hot. So we just lift it out and then we're gonna put it on an easy press mat to cool for 15 minutes before we unwrap it. Okay, so while we wait for our infusible ink mug to cool, let's move on to our sublimation project. And these are the things I'm going to be using. So this is our printout, our sublimation printout. And if you notice, it's a very muted color. It's supposed to be that way. The heat will bring out the color. If you've used infusible ink, it's a much the same thing where it, the designs look muted and then when you apply the heat, it gets very vibrant. And I also have heat resistant tape. I have my paper trimmer because we wanna trim this design out and apply it to the mug with heat resistant tape. Because if you recall, 
recall, this is the bounding box that Cricut prints when you're going to use your Cricut machine to cut it. Well, we don't need the bounding box because we're not gonna cut it. We're just going to trim out that design and apply it to the mug. Okay, so let's move everything out of the way and we'll go ahead and cut out our design. Okay, so this is really simple. This sublimation paper is, is a lot like laser paper. So if you were using the inf infusible ink pens and things. Um, so we're just gonna trim off the bounding box. So I cut out all three pieces and then what I've done is I've laid them back down in their pattern. Now if I were printing this on my printer just straight from Illustrator or um, a design that I put together, then I wouldn't have to do this. But because I took this from Cricut and they only print in certain um, sizes for print then cut, I'm just going to tack these three together and with this pattern I was able to just use my ruler and line up the little wheels so I know that each of them are in the correct location. So I have laid these together. I'm just going to use my heat resistant tape and tape these together and then we'll go ahead and apply it to the mug. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take my lint roller and I want to roll my mug. You always want to do this to make sure you don't have any lint anywhere on your surface so that you don't have to worry about ink adhering to the lint and then having spots on your design. Okay, so as I was putting this on the mug, I realized that um, my pattern, I had centered it and my design needs to go on the front of my mug. So all I did was I moved my pattern piece to the back side. I did measure it just to make sure that my little buses are still in the right spots. And then I used my heat resistant tape to tape those down. So then when I wrap it around my mug, and we'll make this good and snug, when I wrap it around, I have an excess of about an inch and a half. And so I just marked and snipped it with a pair of scissors as to where I want that to end. Now what I want to do, now that I have my mug all together, what I want to do is I want to take three layers of butcher paper. Butcher paper is pretty inexpensive, um, but this is just a great way to protect our mug press. Now we're going to bring in our mug press and I've already preheated it. Okay, so the mug has completely cooled and now it's time for our big reveal. So we're just going to pull the tape away. Let's see how it did. I'm so excited. Okay. And so then that was my, my butcher paper. And then that was my heat resistant tape. taped it up good, didn't I? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my stars. How stinking cute did that turn out? And we put pattern in the lettering and stuff and the patterning in um, a different pattern. We had polka dots in offset around it. And then we have all the little buses. It is so sweet. And see, then our pattern goes all the way around. Oh my gosh, I am totally in love. Okay, so here's the big reveal. So we'll take off our butcher paper first. Oh, this is so cool, look at that. You can already see like the color coming through. And so then we'll take off the protective layer. Oh my. Oh my goodness guys, it turned out so good. And this is how easy it is to make a beautiful patterned mug and personalize it for your teacher with Cricut Design Space and infusible ink. you can use both infusible ink or sublimation with your Cricut mug press um, so that you have so many options. So if you've not already, hop down in the description below and tell me what you thought of today. Tell me if you want to hear more about sublimation, if you want to hear more about the mug press, if you want to learn more about Cricut Design Space, and if you've not already, please hit that subscribe button and join me for all my future videos. By the way, I did put links down below for everything that we used here today so that you can find everything easily. And I will see you guys next time.